Christina. All right. So Eric, do you want to talk a little bit about vintage fitness? Absolutely. We have a lot of people that I'm, I know well on this webinar that I can <laughs> see. Um, vintage fitness, we do in-home and virtual personal training for seniors. We only work with older adults. So we're really quite specialized in this field. Um, clients do achieve their health goals with us. But I always emphasize when I talk to clients, it's not biki bikini body season, you know, you're retiring and you need to use, lose 20 pounds, 90 day transformation. This is making positive lifestyle choices, slow and steady, slow and steady, and you do achieve your results. But it's not a quick fix type, type, fix type of organization. And we were founded in 2005 when I was pregnant with my second daughter. So I guess we're, we've been doing this for 16 years. So we know what we're doing. My dad says, don't forget your mother. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Christina, you can push the slide okay. along there. So uh, thank you everybody to jump in today, uh, to spend this time with us today. And thank you, Erin, for this opportunity to talk, to uh, sharing a little bit of my knowledge and my experience. And my name is Christina, if you don't know me. I work with Vintage Fitness since 2019. And the same year that I graduated for, from my program, uh, Fitness and Health Promotion Program at Humber College. And also I, I have a background in physiotherapy from, from my country of origin. And I, there I did some certifications on global posture re-education. So I'm very grateful that I can use um i can work nowadays as a personal trainer and with the knowledge that i got from my background and then i can ensure the best technique for my clients especially re related to posture that's why it's so important to me talk about posture and if you are my client you know already how many times i i tell you core is strong shoulders back during the training because it's very important to not get injury to avoid that in, any injury during the training. So that's why I'm so worried about posture. And here you can see me and my family, my family and I, uh, Niagara Falls, two years ago. And my youngest son, the shortest one in the picture, now he's taller than me. <laughs> so it's amazing. And everybody's health. So it's very good. Uh, I hope to go there this year maybe at the end of this year or maybe next year again without masks <laughs> or with masks if we need to it's okay well let's go let's talk about easing your low back pain so in today's session i want to talk with you about common causes of back pain and sedentary behavior is a topic that i i, I think it's really important because you can understand better what is sedentary behavior why sedentary behavior can impact on your pain and physical activity incorporated on your daily lives. So we have a kind of a different um, philosophy about physical activity today that I want to share with you. How to improve your quality of life through awareness, posture and ergonomics. So I will, I, I will touch base a little bit about awarenesses, how you can improve your awarenesses, your posture and ergonomics. So some tips that you can use on your daily basis to help you with ease your low back pain or your pain. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's moving on. So good, the first exercise here, it's about awarenesses. So what is awareness first? So awareness is the perception of your body. So this is very important because through awareness, you can avoid injury, especially if you, if you have a back pain, if, if you are doing some daily activities that you used to do. And if you have more awareness of your body, you can help yourself. You can manage better your pain to avoid to have pain. So... I want you to take a moment to, to feel, feel your body. So if you are sitting on a chair or on your couch, so just take a moment to feel, 
how is your posture right now? So feel the position of your neck, of your head, if it's more anterior or most, more posterior. Feel the position of your shoulder. And I will just change my position here, then you can see me better. So feel if your shoulder are more rounded or are more straight. Feel if you are more seated more forward on the chair or more at the back of the chair. If your back is touching the back of the chair or not. How is the position of your hip related to your legs? If your knees are more bended or more straight, if your legs are crossed, if your feet are, are, are on the ground or not. So feel, take a moment to feel the position of your body right now. And then try to correct yourself. So try to correct yourself in, in a position that you feel that is, a bad, as a, is the best position for you right now. So maybe you can grab a pillow or a, to put on your back or anything that you can make to, that you think that is better to improve your posture. And then keep this moment on your mind. And then later we are coming back on this slide to see, to talk a little bit about, more about posture. All right. Now let's talk in about common causes of chronic back pain. So of course, if you, had, uh, if you have a chronic pain, you know already some of these causes. May, maybe you, you know already some of these causes, but what is a chronic pain? So a chronic pain is a pain that lasts for more than 12 weeks. So if you have a pain that is more than 12 weeks, you have a chronic pain. And as we get older, we have a lot of, um, a lot of uh, different structure modifications, sorry, on, our, on the structure of the vertebras and the cartilages. So one common cause is the degenerative disc disease. So what happened here, and you can see my arrow here, the arrow, you can see Erin? Yes, yep, we can okay. see. So we have our, our vertebras here. And on a small picture here, you can see the vertebras and you can see these discs, this cartilage tissue here called disc between our vertebras. So this, uh, these discs are made to absorb the impact of our vertebra, especially on the axis, uh, actual axis. So in this position here. So they are shock absorbers. And also they allow a little bit of mobility of our spine. So as we get older, what happened? We have a, a wear. So we have um, a modification of, on the structure of these discs. So get, they, get, they can get a little bit thinner, they can dry out or they, they can crack. So that's why we don't have more the ability to, or at, at least we have a reduced ability to shock absorb. So the, the shocks are not absorbed as well as before. And also our back now is a little bit more stiff. So you don't have the ability to move so well your back as before. And also you, you can, you can uh, have a condition called herniated discs. So on the herniated discs, you have uh, inside of these discs, we have a material and this material can bulge from the disc and can compress the nerves that goes into the, the spine. So you can have a very bad condition here, a very painful condition. And you can have pain that goes uh, through your leg, numbness, tingling, a lot of uh, very bad pain. So. This is a condition that can cause as we age as well, but also is common on um, adults. So another condition that can cause is vertebral fracture caused by osteoporosis. So osteoporosis is more related to the uh, bone density. So we have some conditions related to gender, um, um, color of skin, genetic that you can being more susceptible to having the osteoporosis or osteopenia. 
And what happens is your bone gets more fragile and you can have a, a, a fracture easier than if you, don't, if you have a, um, a health uh, bone. So this is a very painful condition as well. And another thing that the, the, as we get older is common is osteoarthritis. And it's not just common on our spine, but also on our knees. It can cause in another joints. And is a again a condition of our the structure of the vertebra, especially. And what it happened here is you have a, a thinner vertebra now. So now again you have more, you can compress more your, your vertebras because of the thinner of the vertebras. And also it can create a A new bone can again compress the, the nerves on our spine it can, it, and it can cause a lot of pain and this pain can go again uh, through the leg or just to stay on your back. So it's a condition, it's a very common condition uh, among our elderly people. Scoliosis is a, now is a condition more related to the curvatures of the spine. So if you can hear, see here on the spine, we have some normal uh, curvatures here. So cervical and lumbar, you have more a convex um, curvature, but some people can have a condition called hyperlordotic. So then it's created by an imbalance of your bones, of your, sorry, of your muscles. And this condition here can also cause an imbalance on, your, on the other muscles of your body, like knees and feet. So the good thing is we can help with exercise. So another condition here is that, for example, on the thoracic and here is sacrum. Uh, this part of the vertebras, we can have a condition called hyperciphotic. Uh, so on the hyperciphotic, we have the, the condition that is very common to see when we get older is a condition that you, your, your shoulders is really rounded and you have this curvature more, the modification of this curvature. So you have more a convex curvature, he, curvature here. So this is very painful as well and is genetic. Is genetic and it depends on, on your job as well. A lot of things impact on you have this modification on your back. And the scoliosis is a condition, again, genetic. And it's when you see the, the, the person from the back, you can see your, your spine are straight. And on this condition, you can see like a nest on the vertebra, so on the, on the spine. So it has a lot of levels of severity. And is most the cause is most genetic, but it's a condition that causes a lot of pain as well. And you have a lot of muscle imbalance, but of course we can help you with exercise to decrease the pain on this condition as well. So this Christina, is just it, I think this could be a good time for you to a couple of things. This could be a good time for you to answer v Valerie's question. And it mm -hmm. was, I'm wondering how often back pain is related to issues with the hips. Sometimes it's difficult to tell exactly where the pain originates from. Um, and the other thing I would just mention is I've had a couple of internet unstable messages. So if I drop off, because I have six of us here are working from, uh, then you're the co-host. So don't panic. We're all good. But if you can answer the question from Valerie here, that would be great. Yeah. So Valerie is a very general question, but um, this, this pain can cause, can the origin of the pain is the most, I think, important uh, thing to find out, for example, if it could be on their hip uh, right now, but can, it can be they started in another part of the, the back, for example. So just a, a good assessment can, um, can see uh, where the imbalances of the muscles are at this point. So then we can create, um, you can do some exercises to help with those imbalances. But yeah, the, 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 the joints, for example, the, if you have a pain on your back, uh, for sure it's impacting on your, on your hip. 
because we have the pelvic tilt. So for example, if you have a lordotic condition, this lordotic condition creates a lot of imbalance, in, uh, imbalance on your core, for example, your abdomen muscles that is related to your glutes and your hips as well. So you have a condition here that creates a lot of imbalance. And of course, the hip is involved in all, all these things. So the important thing is to see which muscles are uh, most uh, weak and some of them could be strong as well. And you have to do exercise that create a balance between those muscles. I hope I, I <laughs> you understand the question. I answer your question. I think so. Thanks, Christina. All right. So let's talk a little bit about incidence of the, <clears throat> the back pain. So I found two statements about the incidence. So one is low back pain is the most common health problem among older adults that results in pain and disability. And now we know why, because we have this, all these modifications on the tissues, the vertebras, and it can cause uh, pain uh, wear over the years. And also existing evidence suggests that prevalence rates of severe and chronic low back pain increase with older age. And especially when I was searching about the, the incidence is more on the low back than on the other parts of the back because on our uh, lower vertebras, the vertebras of our lumbar, we have more mobility. So these vertebras allow us a little bit more mobility. So because of the mobility, we have more pressure on these uh, vertebras. And that's why we have more pain, that is more common pain on the lower back than on the rest of our spine. All right, so let's see the risk factors now. So the risk factors is related about gender. So the most common as we get older is women to have more back pain than men. And <clears throat> it's because of the hormones. As we get older, we have the estrogen, an important hormone, hormone that uh, women have, and it starts to decrease. And this hormone, the, the, the reduced of this hormone uh, cause a lot of um, decrease of our muscle mass, uh, cartilages. So uh, it's because of that. And prior work expo exposure. So uh, if you used to work with uh, jobs that requires a lot of uh, grabbing a lot of heavy weights or that you have to stay seated for a long time or standing for a long time, we know that being seated for a long time is bad for, for the, the pain, especially on your back pain. Um, so uh, if you have to stand in for a constant period of time as well, or even if you have to bend it too much from your waist and grabbing way heavy weights from the floor. So this kind of work can make you have the probability that you can, um, that you can develop this kind of, of pain. Physical activity, for example, related to intensity and frequency of activity. So for example, if you were a, a athlete, a profession that have to, to lead to a lot of impact on your joints. This could be a, 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 a probability to develop this kind of pain. Smoking, because smoking is related to tissue. When you smoke, you, we know that we have a lot of damage on our tissues, cartilages. So we, you can um, increase the probability to have a low back pain. And obesity is a huge one because we know that if, if you are, a, uh, if you have extra weight, we are your you, your, your joints are, are grabbing, are having extra weight. So this is a huge one, but we can imagine it through exercise, through a, a better, a better, a, an active life. So this this is the good thing. We can always try to reduce these risk factors. All right. So now let's talk about impact on quality of life. So how this uh, chronic back pain can impact on your quality of life. So untreated or undertreated older adults with back pain may result in, and it's just not untreated. For example, if you have a, a chronic back pain, you, you probably went to the doctor 
and you did some kind of treatment. So you can do, uh, for example, a conservative treatment. There is some medications, taking some medications, physiotherapy, exercise, and uh, injections. Or maybe you have to go under surgery. Some, some cases you have to go under surgery. And if you have this pain for a long time, if you don't get rid of this pain, this will start to impact on your quality of life, especially on your sleep. So you, you cannot sleep well, especially if you don't have position to sleep, if you feel pain during sleep. So we have some tips about that. We withdraw from social and recreation activities because you don't feel confident to, to go to do some activities outside. You feel pain, you feel fear. And then it starts to impact on mental health. You start to have a psychological distress because of this uh, this condition, and then you can have a rapid deterioration of your functional ability because you, you are not moving as well as before, right? So you are feeling pain. So you start to to stop uh, doing so um, so um, so active. So then you can have a, a decrease on your functional ability, and then you can have an impact on your on your risk of fall. You can increase the risk of fall. And this is a huge one because if you fall and break a bone, it's very difficult. It's more difficult to recover than a, a youngest person. So, so that's why it's so important to pay attention. And that's why it's my goal today to help you to manage this kind of things, to pay attention on your posture, your allowances, during your daily life activities. All right, let's move on. And now I want to talk about sedentary behavior. I think this one is, is very important because first, what is sedentary behavior? So sedentary behavior is some activities that makes you stay, uh, stay more, um, don't spend too much uh, level of energy. So we have a unit called metabolic equivalent, but you don't need to remember this name. It's just to, to see that this metabolic equivalent is related to the energy expenditure uh, on your daily activities. So sedentary behavior is, um, you don't have, you have a very low expenditure energy during this, those activities. You have a, a, a certain level of expended, of energy level, of energy expenditure, but very low. So what, which one, which are those activities? So reading, for example, watching TV, sewing, or even driving. So it's, it's sometimes it's fun activities, but we have to be careful to not spend too long on those activities because we know that it, being seated for a long time can impact on your uh, spine, on the pain. So it's very important to, to pay attention on how long are you spending in those activities. And now we have a question for you to <laughs> think about. So Erin, can, can you put our first poll question about sedentary behavior? Yeah, it should should be appearing there. Do you, do you yes. see it? Perfect. So on a typical day, how many hours do you spend in continuous sitting without without standing, doing some of these activities that I just mentioned? Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to measure, but think about in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night approximately how many time. And, and, and I think the, pic the pictures that you had were good. If you think about how many hours you spent reading, watching TV, in the car. Yeah, yeah. So for all you don't of us, think about out. that, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so common there's... activities during the day that we don't think about, but make, make us stay seated for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then if we're in pain, of course, you think if I yes. get up and start moving, it might cause pain. So it's just mm -hmm. about doing the right type of movement for someone with yeah. low back pain. Um, and then Linda Sparling saying the computer. Yeah, mm, all, all of us yeah. are sitting on the computer. I wish we could do like a, 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 a marching webinar, 
<laughs> yeah, um, we can try that the next time. <laughs> so um, uh, we, we have, it looks like most of the votes are in here. So I will show mm -hmm. the, the results. Yeah. So 60% more than two hours a day. Less than two hours, thirty-six uh, percent, and I'm not sure it's four percent. Yeah, because sometimes we don't know exactly uh, our activities that we are usually do during our daily daily basis, but we don't think about that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important to think about uh, those activities. So All one right. question. Uh, that came up from Linda, does it help to minimize sedentary activity by standing up every 20 minutes or so? Yeah, I will talk about, thanks, thanks. I will talk about in a minute. So uh, another thing that I wanted to think about, thank, thank you for asking, for, for answer the questions, the poll. So I wanted to just uh, uh, tell you to think about, uh, beside of the, the stage too many hours seated, what are the activities that make you remain seated? And could you change some of these activities? So you don't, you don't need to answer right now, but think about how is your posture when you are seated? And how can you change your posture to sit in a better position? So just think about of these questions and then maybe you can try to change a little bit of your habits on your daily basis. Because we know that if we stay for more than one hour seated, uh, it's not uh, ideal. So it's better if you can stand every hour. So one hour straight seated, then you can stand and walk a little bit around, even for five minutes, just to to uh, to make some blo blood flow to your to, to your back to your spine to move a little bit then you create a little bit more mobility for your spine so it's better if you can the ideal thing so one hour and then stand to walk a little bit like five to ten minutes and then you can sit down again so try to pay attention and what you can what you can do to help is maybe um, do a, a diary so write down write on a paper for example if you don't have a, an idea if I, I don't know how many hours i'm seated so do a, 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 a just write down on a paper the activities that you are doing during the day so take a note and then you can see and you can have a better idea and try to 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 build a plan about this so how can i not stay too much seated what i can do to to improve my posture when i'm seated so very good, thanks for answer. And now we are going to the physical activity. So let's Christina, move Christina, the, the one thing I, I would also mention here is I always recommend to clients, obviously drinking enough water is really important. So if you, drink, if you have water beside you all the time, especially in the first half of the day, so you're not peeing all night, if you drink quite a bit of water in the first half of the day, you'll naturally have to get up quite often just to go to the washroom. So yes, you know, it's true. it has lots and lots of benefits to drink lots and lots yes, of water, thanks, especially Sharon. in the morning. It's a good point, yeah, yeah, sure. All right, so let's talk about physical activity. And now, sorry, we have um, a new philosophy about physical activity. Because physical activity, uh, uh, many years ago, was more talking about resistance training and do a high intensity training, vigorous training. But nowadays, they found that even, uh, even small activities like uh, cleaning, gardening, walking, is still a good activity to improve your overall health, so related to a chronic condition, and also for your pain, for if you have any pain, for example, on your back. So it's good uh, things to do, of course, we have to pay attention in the, po in the posture. Uh, on those activities, and I will talk a little bit about uh, in a minute, but it's, it's important to, to keep in mind that you can stay active and you can move during your daily basis, doing simple activities that maybe you already do those activities. So 
Uh, and of course, it's important to have uh, resistance training as well twice a week, 150 minutes of uh, moderate to intensity activity related to our Canadian physical activity guideline. But it's also important to do simple activities like gardening, cleaning, anything that you like, walking. So maybe you can create an, uh, a balance between those sedentary activities that you like and those physical activities as well. So now we have another question for you. Christina, but just before we get to that, a few things I would mention. One, the, when you said Health Canada um, Physical mm -hmm. Activity Guide, is 150 uh -huh. minutes of activity. I think it's important uh -huh. to mention that that's the phys physical activity guide for people over 65. Because sometimes people will say to me, well, I'm 80 or I'm 70. I think that's wrong. That's not for me. It is. <laughs> it's for people yes. over 65. <clears throat> so that that's everybody. That's, that's a lot of people on this call. And then the second thing I'd mentioned, Gail asked mm -hmm. a, a, a question that I absolutely love, which is, the medical response from traditional medicine often more often used to be medication, which is so often mm -hmm. ineffective. And I agree with you, Gail. I mean, often it isn't, but there's times where it is, um, or people are kind of over medicated, um, have attitudes mm -hmm. changed and, and is therapy and exercising recommended now? Um, so I'll take that question. I'd say it is changing. Um, there's an organization that Vintage Fitness is an accredited member of called Prescription to Get Active. And what that is, um, you can look it up. It's a charitable organization. And what it involves that people can go to their family doctors and the family doctors can feel confident to prescribe exercise to their patients. And uh, prescri prescription to get active then vets uh, fitness facilities. And, and Vintage Fitness is the is the one for, for seniors in Toronto that is vetted. So if you're looking for more information, it's called prescription to get active. So it's changing, but we still have a little, little journey to go um, with that, I would say. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thanks, Erin, for this information. So, so let's uh, talk about our first question here. And Erin, please, if you can put on the question on the pool for people to answer. And this is about phys physical activity. So on a typical day, how many hours do you spend in some kind of physical activity? And that can include gardening, cleaning, not just uh, training, resistance training or, or high intensity moderated activity. So you can put low activity as well. Anything that make, make you active. Let's see. So the votes are still coming in here. So I'll wait for, for a minute or two. Well, not a minute, mm -hmm. I'll wait for like 20 seconds and just see. Sure. So let's see on a typical day, how many hours do you spend in some kind of physical activity? More than two hours, less than two hours, or I'm not sure. And, and even the awareness of if people, I think it's great that some people are saying, I'm not sure, because I yeah. think it's important for us to have what you can change, what you're aware of. And if you're not mm -hmm. aware of something, you can't change it. So I think that's huge just to say, oh, yeah. actually, I don't, I don't, I'm not paying attention how much time I'm spending sitting. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay. It's amazing. So I will share the results now. All right. So more than two hours, 61%. Oh, and it's very good, thanks. And less than two hours, 36%. So you can always improve that. And if you're not sure, you can write, uh, if you want to, if I can give you a tip, you can write the, a journal or a diary and just, just put on the, this diary that something about uh, the activities that you are doing during the day, and maybe then you can realize how many minutes are you doing, are you physically active? And if you are not more than at least 30 minutes a day, you can start to improve in this little by little because uh, again, uh, coming, com uh, going back on the guidelines, it's important to do 150 minutes of activity during the week. So if you do, if you think about, you can, if you do 30 minutes of um, an activity 
that uh, increase a little bit your heart rate. So maybe a brisk walking 30 minutes a week, then you can, you can get your 150 minutes per week, right? So think about that. And thanks again to answer the questions. And another thing that I want you to talk is about, uh, and I want you to think about again, which physical activities make you feel good? Because we know that it's important to have fun, to enjoy the activities, right? And to find motivating to exercise. So think about which physical activities make you feel good. What can I do to increase my physical activities if I'm not doing enough during the day? How is my posture again? during those activities, for example, gardening, how can I improve my posture during gardening or during cleaning? And how can you change your posture during these activities, those activities? So another thing to think about, and you can write again and find out, and I'm sure that you are feeling better. You, and you can, you'll be allowed to manage better your pain if, you're, if you have a balance between sedentary uh, activities and physical activity. So All Christina, right. I think this would be a, a good, um, Serena is asking a good question, which is, which is helpful, uh, kind of linked to your question about posture doing certain activities. Mm -hmm. So she's asking how to get rid of lower back pain while doing laundry, having to bend up and down a lot. Oh, okay. So I have a slide about uh, tips about how you can do the, um, this kind of, of, of activities, and I, I will talk about it later. I will just mark here. Absolutely, and uh, there's somebody um, had, had asked, would it not be better to take longer breaks than five minutes? Uh, you mean like walking more than five minutes? Yeah, I mean, I think you were saying, you know, you take short breaks, would, long, would longer breaks more than five minutes, would that be better, is the question. Yeah, for example, if you take breaks, uh, like, uh, for, for example, so you, if you are sitting for one hour, one hour and 30 minutes, then you can walk a little bit more. And it's, it's enough, for example, one hour seated, you can stand and walk a little bit more. But the, the most important thing is break those, uh, the, those, seat, the, those continuous seated position to a short breaks, like, um, yeah, of course, if, if you can walk more than five minutes, like 10 to 15 minutes is better, of course, because then you, you are more active. But the most important thing is not to stay seated for more than one hour straight. I think I, I answered the question, but Erin, you can help me if uh, I didn't yes. understand. Yeah, I think uh, the main thing is taking more breaks that may have to be shorter because of the other demands oh, that you yeah, have yeah, in your yeah. life, mm -hmm. as opposed to like, I'm going to, you know, it's good to go for long walks. I'm going to walk for two hours. Then I'm going to sit for eight hours. Oh, okay. Then I'm going to, you know, uh -huh. like it's, it's better to break up so that your yes, spine yes, isn't in yes. that same spot uh -huh. for such a long time. It's better to break up. Yeah. All right. So let's moving on. Ah, now our, our is light. Let's Let's remember the first slide that we, we think about our posture. So now I will help you to, to know how to sit in a better position. So as you can see here, the first slide, the, the, the first position here, why this position is not good? Because uh, the man is seated on his sacrum here. So I will come back to the... Uh, is like here that you can understand better here. So we have our spine here, right? So sometimes we sit on this part here, the sacrum. So the better position, and I will show you, is when you sit on your ischis tuberosity. So these bones here, we have two bones underneath our glutes. So if you go side to side on the chair, so if you move your body side to side on the chair, and it's better if you are seated in a hard surface than on a soft surface. If you go side to side, you can feel two bones underneath your glutes. So then you find the center position there. And now I will come back to the other slide. So <clears throat> for example, this, uh, the man here that is sitting in his, in his ischial tuberosity. So here you can see that his seat is straight. 
so on your on your on his bones here and this is a good position why his back is touching the back of the chair so his back is supported by the back of the chair and of course, if you can touch the back of the chair, if you have, for, exa uh, for example, a hyperlordotic position here, you can put a pillow or a, a towel uh, here behind your back, your lumbar. And you can see this line. I hope you can see here this line. And his ears is aligned with his shoulder, hip. And then you can see your, his knees in 90 degree and then his feet on the ground. So I know that is, is hard sometimes. Uh, we are not used to sit in this position all the time, and I get it, but it's very important to pay attention. You start to pay attention on the position, and maybe you can put something to help you to, to sit more straight. So put a towel or a pillow behind your back. And the most important thing here is try to keep your, your feet on the ground when you are seated, and try to support your back is a good idea as well. So then you're not putting too much pressure on your spine. And here we are doing an exercise, an exercise before moving on. Erin, do you wanna talk something? Well, I just, Linda uh, makes a good point here. You know, would it be better to have your monitor higher in the picture um, so that it's almost at eye height. I think if you can have an external monitor for your um, laptop, if you're working on a laptop, that makes sense. It's to do with, well, it's to do with chin position. So you don't uh, want to be looking here. I will talk here, about so that. Yeah. yeah, I will talk about that in a minute. Thanks, Liz. I just want to do the exercise first and then I will talk on this position. All right, so follow me. So I want you to find your bones. So. Try to go side to side on the chair. So find those bones again underneath your glutes. Then I want you to try to put your feet on the ground, put your arms at sides, try to relax your shoulders. And then I want you to breathe in through your nose. When you breathe out, imagine that you have a, a rope pulling you from the top of your head towards the ceiling. When you breathe out, try to increase a little bit this part here of your neck. So you, let's try to increase the, the, the space between the vertebras here through your breathing. It's a very small movement, but let's try together. So breathe in, breathe out, trying to increase a little bit your, your posture. Remember that something is pulling you from the top of your head towards the ceiling hold a little bit there put your chins a little bit down now and then relax and then let's do just one more time breathe in breathe out and hold a little bit there and relax so it's a very small movement but through this exercise, you can improve your posture and you can do, for example, once a day for three minutes, two minutes, just to create a little bit more of awareness about your posture. So try to uh, do the exercise every day and it will be a good, uh, a very good exercise for you, especially if you have, if you stay seated for a long time. All right, so let's talk about this picture here now. So I agree with you. The only thing that is wrong here is the position of the, 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 the computer here, because you can see here, his chin is, a, a lot, uh, is more uh, down. So the, the position of the monitor could be a higher, uh, uh, most high, uh, high, higher, higher. <laughs> So the, her, her, her eyes should be at the direction of the monitor. So she needs to put, a, is, is very low actually. So she needs to increase more. And because the shin should be parallel to the floor here. So this is the only thing that is wrong in this picture and it's good because we can correct here. And the, the main thing here as well is to relax, uh, allow the relaxation of the shoulders. So 
the forearm should be supported by the table. So, so should be on the table. And this is allow your shoulder to relax. And as you can see here, she puts something behind her back to make her a little bit more straight. And we can see her feet, but um, because of the angle of the knee, we can see that her feet is on the ground. So it's a right position. And of course, nowadays we are spending a lot of time using computer, Zoom. So it's, it's, it's a very important picture to make, uh, make us, us more aware of the, of the movement. So it's, I agree with you, it's very low the position of the computer. So we the only thing that we have to change here is this. So put a little bit higher. Thanks. And I hope you enjoy the exercise. <laughs> now let's talk about standing posture. So when you are standing, a good position uh, is this one in the center. So we have the, uh, again, the line here. So you can see here uh, the direction of the shoulder, the hip, the knees, and the feet. Here is a bad position because, uh, and is a, a usual position as we get older because we start to, to, to develop this kyphotic position here and shoulders, rounded shoulders, forward head. So this with some, uh, a little bit of awareness and exercise, it can get better. And here the same situation, we have a forward head, rounded shoulders, but now he has more a sway back. So he has more a lordotic situation here with weak abdominal muscles. So it's all about, um, and you can see that these weak abdominal muscles created a hyper extension of the knee. So it's all related. If you have a, a weak muscle here, an imbalanced muscle here can create an imbalance in, on your lower back as well. So that's why it's so important to, to strengthen those muscles and have a little bit more awareness of our posture. All Christina, right. I, so would just, I would add to that. Um, one of the advantages of working with the trainer is that most people, if they're doing weight training on their own, they're doing some resistance training on their own, especially women, they overtrain the front part of the body that they can mm -hmm. see. So there's yeah. overtraining of chest, way overtraining of quads, way over your hip flexors and undertraining of the back body. So yeah. under training of back muscles, of glutes, of hamstrings, of calves. Mm -hmm. So it's really important when you think about if you are doing any resistance training, if anything, do double on back body than you are on the front body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. We have to create a balance uh, between our muscles to get a, a better position and uh, yeah, to protect our joints. That's why it's so important to get some sometimes uh, directions for from someone uh, to do those exercises. So here I, I will, I want to give you some tips about posture and I will talk about the loud right? and I didn't forgot. <laughs> so uh, here uh, we talk about this already. Avoid to sit for long periods of time, especially on a soft surface. So use a pillow behind your back if you need to. Uh, but it's good uh, sometimes to take this pillow off and just to, to, to try a position without the pillow, just to, to, uh, to, be your, your, to allow your body to get used to a right position, to not get used to just a pillow all the time behind your back. So it's good to do. Remember the exercise, one to two minutes every day. Also, avoid standing in the same position for too long. So you can use a stool or a box to relax your back. So you can put, for example, if you are doing something on the kitchen, uh, cooking uh, on a standing position, you can put a box and you can put one foot on the box and then uh, five, one hour, not one hour, like 15 minutes, then you can change it uh, to the other foot. And this will make you, you relax your back more. Uh, so to reach something from the floor, try to bend at your knees and hips. Do not bend forward uh, with your knees straight. So try to always, if you can, try to always bend your at knees and hip. And to reach something that is over your head, use a support again. Put if you can. So of course, uh, carefully. 
uh, is better than try then try to reach out and to do some uh, weird movements with your back and and harm yourself. So avoid to reach out with your arms too far. Uh, to sleep, choose a firm mattress. Uh, is better than a soft mattress. Uh, if you don't want to replace your mattress, uh, you can place a board under your mattress. So this is a, a very interesting tip that you can use and an easy one. And the position. So if you are laying down on your back, on your back, you can put, you can place a pillow underneath your your knees. If you if you like to to lay down on your side, at your side, you can put a pillow between your knees again. And if you want to, it's not the, a good position, but if you really like to, to lay down on your stomach, you can put a pillow underneath your hip. So this could avoid the lordotic position uh, of your back. And when you're standing from the laying down, laying, lying position, avoid bending forward at your waist. Instead, turn on your side, swing your legs on the side of the, of the bed, and then sit. So I know that is difficult, but try to, it is, as we get older, we have to change a little bit our habits. So try to think about those changes, and it really can help on your daily basis. And about the laundry, uh, it's difficult, of course, but you can try so we stay on the front of the, 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 the machine. So if you are putting the, don't, don't, don't put something from the floor. So wasting from your, uh, bending from your waist. So try to bend your knees if you have to grab something. And then try to be as straight as you can to put the things on the, um, on the, on the machine. Or you can try to, uh, make something to, to make the machine a little bit higher. So it's better higher than lower. Then you don't need to lean forward to put the things on the machine. And I hope you answer your question. All right. So let's talk a little bit about cycle of pain. And I think I have to go faster here. All right. So again, let's talk a little bit about the cycle, the cycle of pain. Take the cycle through exercise. So we have the pain. And when we, when we have a pain, we have a muscle tension. We start our, our, our muscles start to, to be more tension on this area. This tension causes a reduced on the circulation of the area. Sorry, then, then it created a muscle inflammation. And then you are not moving as much as before because you will feel pain again. So you have a reduced movement and then you have the pain again. And all this cycle again and again, and we can break this cycle through ex exercise. So now what are the advantages of the exercising? So immobility and loss of physical independence can be, can be broken by exercises. So through exercise, you can improve mobility of your spine, you can increase strength, reduce pain, decrease stiffness, improve function, and the most important here, decrease the risk of fall. So all these advantages of exercising. Now a very interesting slide that can help you during the exercise. So if you have a, a chronic pain, what exercises are safe for me? So what I sh should I be aware of? So be aware of impact, weights, position, posture, breathing, intensity, and frequency. And I will talk here about those, those important things. So about impact, of course, if you have this uh, condition on your vertebras, on your discs, you have to avoid the impact, right? So activities that allow you to have a le less impact is better. So like walking, swimming, or even re uh, recumbent bike, that is, is a very good one because it has the support for your back. So those activities allow you to have a cardiovascular uh, uh, exercise. And, and you can do all this exercise without any impact. So 
This is a very interesting one about weights. So avoid to grab heavy weights. And I was searching about what could be a heavy weight, but I think it depends more, more about the fitness level of the person. Uh, if it, she would, uh, they used to lift weights before or not. But I found something about more than 30 uh, pounds is a very heavy weight. So avoid it to grab heavy weights. But of course, it depends on your, or, of your uh, fitness level. So instead of using weights, you can use elastic band, even body weight, or light to moderated free weights. Christina, Position. just be before you go on, um, I just want to let people know if they do have a 12 o'clock meeting, we are recording this. We'll go a little bit over 12 today because yeah. we've had lots of <laughs> questions. And so we're happy to do that. Um, if you do have to go because um, you have a 12 o'clock commitment, that's fine. I wanted to let you know before you left that we are launching um, a program for virtual small group training for people that are suffering low back pain. So it's gonna be very, very targeted for people with low back pain. It would just be two or three people with Christina. So I'll email through with a little bit more information about that and we'll talk about that a bit later. But before you go, I wanted to, to let you know that because it's an exciting opportunity where you could train with someone and really be targeted on making some progress uh, to ease your low back pain. Thanks, Christina. Thank you, Erin. So now about position. So be aware about exercises that you have a stable position for your back. So you can do exercises laying down, laying down on the floor. Uh, you can do exercises with, seated with your back, uh, with a back support, maybe supported by the chair. And you can even do standing exercise, but here you have to have more awareness of your body because you have to, all the time that you are doing standing exercise, bending your knees, you, you have to have a good awareness of your core because you have to uh, engage your core to not, um, to not uh, injure yourself. So this is some positions that we can modify during our training. And also you can be aware of postures. So awareness of your body to keep your core engaged and breathe. Why is it so important to breathe during the exercise to keep some muscles relaxed? So for example, if you are doing um, a movement for your arms, for example, an arm curl, then if you are breathing, you can relax those muscles here on your shoulders, on your trapezius muscles. So allow you to keep some muscles relaxed instead of tightening more the muscles. Also, breathing during the exercise, maintain a regular blood pressure, is especially during resistance training. So that's why it's so important to keep breathing, uh, especially when we get older. And intensity. So intensity, it will depend uh, on fitness level, age, cause of back pain and goals, but you can do a low, moderated or a vigorous intensity training. But of course, you have to progress over time. If you never did exercise before, you have really start with a low intensity ex exercise and then uh, progressive to a moderate intensity, intensity. So it will depend on your fitness level. And frequency, frequency as well, which will depend on fit, fitness level again and goals. But of course, uh, you can uh, walk every day, for example, for 30 minutes. Uh, it's a, 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 a low intensity exercise, but will help you, especially with your back pain, to keep more blood flowing to your back and mobility of your spine, of your joints. So, and it, you can also improve, increase the, the, the exercise, the frequency as you get more uh, used to the exercise, of course. All right, so here's some sources seated that I found uh, some information that I mentioned to you, a Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology, and I forgot, but you can always go to a uh, Canadian guideline of exercise to search about more about exercise and, and diet is very important as well. So here now is our program. So, 
Do you want me to take this one? <laughs> yeah. So um, thanks again for, for attending. It was lovely to have all of you and have all the questions. And there's a few questions um, that people have streamed in that I'll, that I'll get to in a minute. Um, but I did want to let you know that we are running a six week program. It's twice a week for one hour per time. Mm -hmm. And it's very targeted on sufferers of low back pain. So it would be two to three people working together virtually um, just mm -hmm. with, the, with the lockdown and people are going to come from all, all different locations. Um, it includes an initial assessment. So a few people were talking about sleeping positions and having mm -hmm. to sleep on chairs because of sleep apnea. And so we would do a full assessment around posture and talk mm -hmm. a bit about sleeping positions and, and things like that. Um, you and know, one important the, thing here, sorry, Eric, is about the, we, are, we are having an individual assessment. Why is so important? Because I wanted to create a more similar group. So we are dividing the, the person that is interested in a more similar group to have more for this person to get more from this program. So is that right. very important to have an individual assessment? Right. So you'll individually assess them and then categorize them in groups yes. of two or yes. three two similar, mm -hmm. similar yes. issues. Okay. That's a good point. Thanks, Christina. Um, improve your body awareness. Uh, make sure you're doing the exercises correctly with the mindset of, okay, I am a low back pain sufferer. So in, with that in mind, what other things should I keep, keep in mind, you know, be aware of, mm -hmm. uh, improve your posture and then just improve your overall quality of life. So I'll send a, a note out, um, but if you're interested in that, um, I'll send an email out tomorrow, but feel free um, to email me through the website or I'll put my email um, in the chat as well. Um, yeah. So we are working on this um, uh, during a lot of modifications to that you can strengthening your back, your core, and have more awarenesses of your body. So different, so um, posture exercise, breathing exercise, awarenesses exercise, and of course, strengthening and stretching in a lot of different positions that you can work in a safe, uh, safe for you for to not uh, target your pain. And then questions. <laughs> so there's a, a couple of questions that have come up. And if people are interested in learning um, a little bit more, we can, uh, we can go through that. Um, the one question that's come up is sleeping position. And there's a few people that have asked questions that I've said, you know, just contact me and, I, uh, and you, you know, we'll give you a free session so we can do a posture analysis with you and do some of that initial stuff. Um, because some of them are just complicated questions that we need to be able to see you move and see your face and things mm. like that to properly answer them. So don't hesitate to email me. Um, I put the email in uh, the chat. It's just Aaron at vintagefitness.ca. And thank you, Anne. Um, and again, uh, Wanda, I'll follow up with you around the program. But if you're interested, I will send a full uh, bit of information about the program, um, mm -hmm. when, when the start dates and things like that. Um, and we'll go from there. So any other um, questions that people have or thoughts? All right. Well, listen, thank you very much, Christina. Um, oh, thank I, you very uh, much for your presentation. Everybody. Thank you for sticking with us for a little bit longer than 12. And I'll send an email out um, about the low back program tomorrow. But if you have questions, please do contact me. So have thank a great for, day. Thank you very much for, for joining me today. I hope you will help you with some uh some important information sharing a little bit of my experience thanks so much thanks erin thank you bye have a great afternoon <laughs>